Welcome to our lecture online. And here we have another example of how to calculate the heat transfer. And here that's kind of a practical example, although overly simplified, as you will see in a moment. But we're going to calculate the amount of heat transferred through a single pane window. And then later on in the next example, we're going to show how that's different when we have a double pane window. So everybody after these two examples will rush out and buy double pane windows for their house instead of single pane windows. Uh, but anyway, let's uh, start with this first example. And um, how do we do that? Well, first of all, uh, this is kind of a different shape. Normally, we think of heat being transferred uh, across like an object like this that has a certain cross-sectional area and a certain length. Well, it's no different here except that the length is very, very tiny. It's simply the thickness of the glass and, of course, the cross-sectional area is very big. So just realize that this is actually no different from what we've done before. Um, so, the equation then, again, would be dq dt, the amount of heat transfer per unit time, is equal to the coefficient of the uh, conductivity, and for glass, that is 0.8 joules per second per meter per centigrade degree. And uh, notice that for glass, it's much, much smaller than it would be for metal, which is good, therefore not as much heat will transfer through glass, uh, times the cross-sectional area, times the difference in the temperature from the inside to the outside of the glass divided by the length of the path. Of course, the length of the path here is simply the thickness of the glass. Let's say that the L is equal to 0 0.5 centimeters, a half a centimeter thick. Okay, plugging in the numbers. Uh, for K, we have a 0 0.8. Uh, for the cross-sectional area, that is 2. For the difference in the temperature between, between the outside and the inside is 20 centigrade degrees, and the length would be 0.5 centimeters. Of course, we have to convert that to meters, which would be 0 0.005 meters. Okay, units-wise, notice that for, uh, for K, we would have joules per second times meters times centigrade degrees. For the cross-sectional area, that would be meters squared. For the difference in the, the temperature would be centigrade degrees, and for the length would be meters. So what do we end up with? Well, the meters will cancel out, the centigrade degrees will cancel out, and we have joules per second. Of course, the unit for joules per second is watts. All right, with uh, my calculator, we'll find out how much that is. So 0 0.8 uh, times 2 times 20 divided by 0 0.005 equals and that would be equal to 6,400 joules per second, which is 6,400 watts, which is actually an enormous amount of energy. So you say, wow, if that's the case and you live in a cold climate, like in Minnesota or something like that, uh, you'd be losing an enormous amount of heat through your windows. Well, like I said, this was an oversimplified problem because it turns out that if the inside temperature is 20 degrees, which is, let's say, room temperature, and the outside temperature is 0 degrees, which is right around the freezing point of water, uh, the glass itself, the inside and the outside portion of the glass, will not be at that temperature. And let me explain how that works. So let's say this is the, the glass window right here, the cross section of it. This is the inside. This is the outside. And even though the temperature inside is at 20 degrees centigrade, and the temperature outside is at zero degrees centigrade, that's not the case for the actual surface temperature of the glass. What turns out is that the temperature will decrease as you get closer to the glass and then will not be at zero degrees on the outside of the glass, and that really the effective difference in the temperature is much smaller than the difference between the inside and the outside temperature. So even though you can say that this would be the delta T relative to the air temperature inside and outside, then this here is really the effective difference in the temperature. So this is the delta T effective that should be used to calculate the heat transfer across the glass. And you can see that this delta T is, of course, a lot smaller than the 20 degrees centigrade, and therefore the actual number you're going to get here would be a lot smaller. In addition to that, to see how this is so oversimplified, we also have heat that's being drawn away or and being pushed onto the window because of the heat convection. So air will be taken heat away and air, will, air heat will be brought to the window pane by the air circulation within the room. So there's some effect there as well. And in addition to that, the glass itself will also radiate out heat and uh, 
and of course it will get heat from the outside as well, but more heat will be radiated because the glass will be at a higher temperature than the outside air and the outside surroundings. And again, heat will be lost through that uh, effect as well. So you can see it's an oversimplification, but nevertheless, it gives us some sort of feeling as to the amount of heat that could be transferred through a window through the conduction of the heat across the window. And we'll see in just a moment when we do double pane windows how that is vastly reduced. But anyway, here it is, a very straightforward example. And the next video, we'll do the double pane window in comparison. We'll keep all the other units the same.